What is making him come back? Fuel. That is the short answer. The question of why the narcissist keeps coming back to you requires further examination. I have explained elsewhere that the post-discard or post-escape hoover is determined by two things. First of all, has there been a hoover trigger? If there is not one, there will be no hoover. If there is a trigger, the next question is, has the hoover execution criteria been met? If it has, the hoover will happen. If it is not, there will be no hoover. Accordingly, the prospect of the fuel to be gained, the activation of the Hoover trigger and the fulfillment of the Hoover execution criteria drives our repeated attempts to engage with you. What then if you have heeded my writing or my recordings and you know that you need to stay out of the first five spheres of influence? What if you have done that and he still keeps hoovering you? This means you have entered, and you keep entering, the sixth sphere of influence. You have no control over this sphere. Your appearance in this sphere occurs irrespective of what you do and is related to our memory of you. Understanding what keeps causing you to appear in the sixth sphere of influence will allow you to appreciate why the hoover keeps happening, and therefore you can respond appropriately. As usual, by not knowing why something happens, you are prone to respond in an emotional rather than a logical fashion. This is the place where we want you, dumped into the emotional sea once again, or at the very least, its icy waters lapping against you, threatening to rise higher and higher. Furthermore, if you understand what causes your appearance in the sixth sphere, then you can remain vigilant ahead of this happening, perhaps taking extra precautions ahead of the possible six-sphere trigger, so that whilst there is a trigger, you cannot stop that, you at least make yourself an unattractive fuel prospect. And therefore, the Hoover execution criteria are not met, and you suffer no Hoover. This then poses the valuable question, what causes your appearance in this sixth sphere of influence? 1. Entirely random. In the same way, you might suddenly find yourself thinking about a cinnamon bagel or whether you should purchase a new telephone. You can just appear in the sixth sphere for no reason whatsoever. There is absolutely nothing to be done about this. There is no way of predicting it. And this, however, does explain why some hoovers appear to come right out of the blue. You have just entered our consciousness. There is no valid reason for that to happen, but you just have. And thus, the Hoover trigger is met. 2. Same name. If we meet someone who has the same name as you, then that is likely to cause a memory of you to form in our mind and you enter the sixth sphere. It could be your first name, a shortened version of it, a nickname, a product which sounds like your name, someone mentioning the name on television, or even your surname. 3. Birthday. The anniversary of your birth is a prime reason for appearing in the sixth sphere. It does not automatically mean it will happen, for instance. A lesser may struggle with remembering dates and therefore may well have forgotten when your birthday is. But as your own birthday approaches, you ought to consider that there is an increased potential for a hoover to take place. 4. Christmas It might be the approaching season to be jolly or Christmas Day itself, but Christmas presents a further risk that you will appear in the sixth sphere. 5. Anniversaries in a similar vein to the birthday, the occasion of an anniversary may well result in your entering the sixth sphere of influence. There is also a wider scope with this to happen because of the greater number of potential anniversaries. This is again dependent on the nature of your narcissist. The superior intellect and cognitive function of the greater narcissist is likely to lend itself to a greater risk of remembrance and a wider range of anniversaries which will be remembered. This may include weddings, divorces, separation, first kiss, first holiday, first time you had sex, somebody's death, somebody else's birth, and such like. If your narcissist exhibited a particular capability for remembering and marking multiple anniversaries, you face a higher risk. Similarly, those who rarely remembered 
will be less likely to find you in the sixth sphere. Number six, objects. A careful distinction has to be made here. Since we regard your property as our property, the appearance of something which, which, which once belonged to you, or still does, will not per se cause an appearance in the sixth sphere of influence. If the item is used by us on a regular basis, for instance, if you left a juicer in our kitchen or a television, then we effectively overwrite its ownership. In such circumstances, we would not think of you every time we looked at the television or used the juicer. It is impersonal and has been assimilated into our controlled environment. If, however, we find your scarf down the back of the settee or one of your books tucked away in a bookcase, this will cause us to think of you and cause you to enter the sixth sphere. All the more reason to ensure that when you have escaped, you recover, so far as is practical, all possessions. 7. By mention. If somebody mentions you to us, this is distinct from you engaging with a member of our coterie or a lieutenant. This is the third sphere of influence. But somebody we have not seen for a while may make mention of you to us, or one of your friends may happen to refer to you. This will then cause you to enter the sixth sphere. 8. Contact details. If we have retained your contact details, such as telephone number, address and or email address, then this will prompt you to appear in our sixth sphere if we come across these details when scrolling through our contacts on our phone. 9. A post or picture on social media. If we see your picture on somebody else's social media, then you enter the sixth sphere. This may prompt you to either ensure nothing of you is posted by you or anybody else ever, or perhaps more practically, ensuring this is done for a period of time post escape or discard until such time you have gathered sufficient strength to repel the potential hoover. 10. Old messages. If we find a letter from you, an old text message or email, then this will cause entry into the sixth sphere. Ordinarily, when we have discarded you and we are concentrating on the new primary source, such remnants from a previous appliance will be deleted as a matter of course, in the same way that we delete you from our minds. There is, however, the possibility this is not done, or, more likely, there's an old account or piece of correspondence has been forgotten about, until that time when we come upon it. 11. The Bible. If our victim was as particularly religious, then this may well cause you to enter into our sixth sphere when we come across a copy of the good book. If your narcissist travelled a lot and stayed in hotels, and you were especially religious, the obligatory Gideon Bible to be found there would cause potential hoovers in that regard. 12. A recording. If there is a sound or image recording that has escaped deletion, perhaps on an old answer phone where you recorded the greeting message, or on a camcorder or phone which has not been used for some time, viewing or listening to this will cause you to enter the sixth sphere. 13. Scent. This does not happen as a matter of course. Your scent has to be both memorable and rare and have not been overwritten in some way. If that is the case, uh, one day we smell those top notes of orange zest, heart notes of magnolia and French daffodil, and base notes of vanilla and ambergris, then you enter the sixth sphere. 14. Photograph. If they survive the likely burning that would occur on discard, then if we find a photograph of you, or perhaps a friend or relative shows us one, you will enter the sixth sphere of influence. 15. Fuel potency obsession. If you have entered any of the spheres of influence, including the methods described earlier, we may be reminded of how extra potent your fuel was. This does not apply to everybody, and only those who gave us the most superlative fuel will find themselves subjected to this. We are reminded of you through entry into one of the six spheres, and as part of this, we remember just how sweet your fuel was. And this stays lodged in our minds and drives us. The memory of this fuel will keep appearing, and therefore you keep appearing in the sixth sphere until such time as something else dislodges you, namely another potent different appliance. 16. Malice Obsession 
The hatred that we may have for you causes you to keep appearing in our sixth sphere again and again and again. This becomes an obsession, and even though nothing else may result in your appearing in any of the spheres, this keeps happening, and the result that you potentially face is repeated hoovers, and they will be of the malign variety. If you find your narcissist keeps on lashing out at you in this way, when you cannot understand why this should be, you are probably experiencing the malice obsession. This will only stop if you succumb to the hoovers and are dragged back into the formal relationship or somebody else becomes a target for our malice. The malice obsession is relatively rare, but it is a risk. Accordingly, if you keep getting hoovered despite staying out of the first five spheres of influence, the above will explain why this is happening. The way to counter this is to be aware of what may cause you to enter the sixth sphere, especially with reference to particular times of events, and therefore ensure that you are an undesirable target for fuel across several fronts, so that the Hoover execution criteria cannot then be met.